Welcome back to Game Development with Pygame. This is part two of our tile-based game project. And in this video, we'll be talking about uh, wall collisions and tile maps. In our last video, we created a simple grid of tiles with a sprite that we could move around on that grid with by pressing the arrow keys in the four directions. And then we created a wall, which is just a object that occupies one square. So I made a line of squares here that, that's going to represent the wall. And now what we need to do is we make, need to make it so that our sprite cannot move through those wall tiles. We're going to do that by going over to our sprite. And we're going to make it so that right here when we move, this tells us what square we're going to move into. Well, we're only going to allow the sprite to move into that square if it's empty. So we need to check to see if something is in this square at dx dy that we want to move into. So we're going to define a command called collide with uh, walls. And that's going to, we're going to pass it the dx and the dy of where we want to check. And I'm going to make, give those default values of zero so that we can check any direction we want, and if we want, we can only pass it one, one of those values, and it'll use the, the zero for the other value. So this just means we need to do a little loop, and we need to go through uh, each of the walls in the walls group. Okay, For each of those walls, we're going to check and see if the walls x and y match the x of the and y of the player plus the move that we want to make. So if the space we're going to move into is equal to the walls x and the walls y. All right, if both of those things are true, then we must have tried to move into a square that has a wall in it. So we're not going to allow that square. We're going to return true and say we did collide. And then if not, then we will return false. So collide with walls is going to tell us true if we tried to move into a square that, where a wall is, false if we did not. So here, this move, we're not going to allow the player to, ch to change their uh, x and y unless collide walls is false. So we're going to say if not collide with walls and just use the dx and dy that we're using. And we'll indent these. And that should do it. So we'll go over to our main and we will run it. And now I am no longer able to move through this wall from any direction. I'm holding the arrow key down, just not letting me move into that space. So the, the move command doesn't even happen because it sees that that space is occupied. OK, so now we have walls that work. And we can spawn walls at any location we want, um, and they'll all work as long as you know we are in the walls group, which all the walls are. are. It's going to not allow us to move into spaces that are occupied by these objects. But what if we want to lay out a level, a maze, or a dungeon, or some other kind of world for us to walk around in? Adding all these little squares and figuring out the coordinates of each square um, is going to be really tedious and cumbersome. And so the solution for that is to use something called a map file. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, to begin with, we're going to use kind of the simplest version possible uh, for doing this, it, which is just a little text file that's going to be a map of our level. And then our game is going to load that map and create walls wherever the map says wall should be. OK, so if we remember from last time, this is our width and height and our tile size. So we know that we have 32 tiles across and 24 tiles down. So if I make a new file, and I'm going to save this, and I'm going to call this I'm going to call this file map.txt. This is not going to be a Python program. This is just going to be a text file. 
and I'm going to up the font a little bit. So I know I need this to be 32 across. So I'm going to hold down the dot until I see myself get to column number 32. Okay. So now I know that's 32 dots across. And then I'm going to duplicate that line until I have 24 of them. There we go. Let's make my window a little bit taller so we can see them all. One more. I'm pressing Command Shift and D. On, a, on Windows, you would press Control Shift D. That duplicates a line. So now I have a grid here of 32 by 24 uh, little dots. I just used a period. These are going to represent the squares in our grid. So what I could do is anywhere I wanted there to be a wall, like for example, let's say I wanted a wall all the way across the top. Right? I'm going to type ones here anywhere that I'm going to type ones anywhere I want there to be a wall. And then I'll do the same thing. I will just copy that and make that the last line too. So now I have I'll have walls along the top and bottom of my screen. And we could even add walls along the side if we just put a one there. And I will delete all these blank ones. And we will just duplicate that instead. OK, so this is going to be my map right now. I just have, oh, let's throw a few in the middle just so we have something. OK, so here I've got some walls going all the way around the edges of my screen and then a little line of walls in the middle. So this is my map file. So now I want my program to load this file, look through it, and anywhere, any box where it finds a one, it's going to generate a wall at that X and Y. So we're going to do that in our load data here. And we need to import the path command to handle all of our file location stuff, depending on whether we're on Windows or OS X or whatever, and make sure we can locate where this file is when we run our program. So we're going to put that our game folder is path.durname file. That's the location where our game, this main.py, where our game is running from. So we know what our folder is. So now we can open up the map.txt. And we talked about opening files and reading from them uh, back in our shmup game project when we were talking about saving and loading the high score. So I'll link to that below if you want a refresher of how the open command works and how you get it to read from files. So we're just going to say path.join game folder map.txt. And we need to say that we're doing that in a read. We're opening that file to read. Okay, and all we're going to do is we're just going to say for each line in F, we want to stick that in a list. So before our loop, let's make a variable called map data. And it's just going to be a list, an empty list. And for each line, we're just going to say map data dot append the line. So at the end of this loop, I will have read in line by line, each line of this file, one after another, and each line will just get appended to that list. So we'll have a list of 24 lines, and each line will be a string containing 32 characters. And we have our map data in our program now. So now we need to read, or, or sorry, we need to loop through that map data and any location we find a one, we're going to spawn a wall. And I suppose technically we should do that in our new, right, where we spawn walls. So let's take this map data variable and let's rename, or let's call that self.mapData. So it's one of our game's properties. And down here in new, we're going to do the wall spawning. So I'm going to erase this because 
we don't want to do it this manual way anymore. And now we're going to loop through our map data list. So I'm going to say for row, so each of the items in the list is a row. Row comma tiles in enumerate map data. And so real quick, let's take a step to the side and talk about, about what enumerate does. So if we go over here and open a Python shell, we've worked with lists plenty of times, right? All the time we work with lists. And let's just make a quick list here that has four items in it, A, B, C, and D. And we know those will be indexed 0, 1, 2, and 3, right? And we know that we can refer to index number 0 is the A. We know that for item in L, you can say print item, and that just loops through the list and looks at each item at a time. And that's all stuff you've seen before. But sometimes in your loop as you go through, you want the item and you want its index number. And so that's what enumerate is for. So if I say for item or sorry, for index item in enumerate L. So what this is going to do is each time through the list, it's going to give me both variables. It's going to give me the index. This, this first one will be the index of the item, and this will be the value. So I will get 0 and A, and then here I will get 1 and B. So I'll just print them out real quick so you can see. Print the index, print the item. And you see I get 0 and A, 0 and B, or sorry, 1 and B, and so on. And that's what we want to do here because each row in this map file, this is row, this will be row zero. So that's the that's going to be the y value of all of these is because they're going to be on row zero. These are going to be on row one or y equals one, and so on. So I want all this data, but I also want to know what index it is, so I know what row that is. So row is going to be equal to the index value, and tiles is going to be equal to that string of all the characters. Well, now we need to do the same thing through that string. And we're going to say enumerate tiles. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an enumerate on this string. And so index number 0 will be a 1. 1 will be a 1. But that index number will be the x value of the tile. So when I get to this tile, I'll have a row of 0 and a column of 14, and so this will be the x and the y of where to put that wall. So now I'll have the value, and I'll have the row and the column. So all I need to do now is just see if the tile is equal to a 1. Right? If I found a 1 and not a dot in that location, then I can spawn a wall. And the wall is going to be at the correct column and the correct row. Okay, and that is all, except I left out the word in here. See that red dot telling me I have an error message. And let's run our program and see what happens. So there we go. There are my walls. And you can see I can't go through them. But it looks like I was one off on the size. Yep, it turns out I went back and I counted. I had counted 31. Uh, dots across, not 32, so I was off by one. So I've added one more column here on each row, and now I have the right number of tiles. And you see I'm spawning a wall everywhere. I wanted there to be a wall. Now you can see the easy thing now to change things is if I want to go in here and make a change because I want a wall, I just have to change the map file and I run my program again, it reads that map file. Now I have a, a wall where I wanted there to be a wall. And here I've pasted in a map I made before that's just a little bit fancier, it looks a little nicer, that I'm going to use for my kind of default map here that's got some 
walls that you got to walk around. Okay, and so that's a good start. One problem we have now, though, is when we run this, my player spawns right here, right? Well, what if there was a wall there? We don't want our player to spawn inside a wall. So that means we can add to our map a player spawn location. So I can say, like for example, if I want my player to spawn in the lower left, I can add a P. And now in my code, I can just say, when I find, instead of spawning the player at 1010, I'm going to say if the tile was a P, then I'm going to paste in that player spawning command, and I'm just going to change this to use the column and the row where we just found the player. And there we go. Now the player spawns at the spot I want him to spawn at. So that'll do it for this video. Uh, we've gone a little bit long this time around. Um, go ahead and play around with the map. Create your, create your own. Uh, lay it out the way you like it. And in the next video, we'll talk about um, some other ways we could make our player move more smoothly around the map and also what kind of game this could turn into. As always, please press the like button and subscribe for the next video. Thanks for watching.